Hi guys, Raj here, back with another video. I am an enterprise solutions architect working at AWS. So this video will be a tutorial on AWS SAM, a serverless application model. Now it's a big topic. I want to cover a lot and go in detail. So I have to break down this tutorial into multiple videos. So what are we gonna cover? So of course we are gonna start with what is SAM and uh, why do we use it? Uh, secondly, we're gonna go over SAM template concepts. From there, we're gonna go over SAM local testing and debugging. Uh, then we're gonna do some deploying using SAM. And uh, under the deployment, we're gonna do Lambda without dependencies, Lambda with dependencies, and then Dynamo API and some more stuff. And of course, we're gonna do hands-on demo for all of the above stuff. Okay, so with that being said, uh, let's start with what is SAM. SAM. <laughs> nope, not that Sam. This is our Sam. I don't know why he is holding an acorn. Okay, so what is Sam? So AWS Serverless Application Model, or Sam, is an open source framework for building serverless applications. It provides shorthand syntax to express function, API, database, event source mapping, and layers. One thing which is important to understand is you can do all this using a plain cloud formation. Uh, however, you have to write a lot of cloud formation uh, to do this. With SAM, it is much, much simpler. Uh, however, when you deploy a SAM, it actually converts into cloud formation uh, during deployment in the back end. So why this is uh, kind of important? Uh, it's because it abstracts the lines and lines of cloud formation. It enables you to build serverless applications faster. Uh, so the less lines of code you can write to spin stuff off, the less chances there is that you will make a mistake and uh, less maintenance as well. So if we take a look at a sample SAM template, uh, don't worry too much, we're gonna go over it in detail, but I just wanted to show you the shorthand syntax. So this like 15 lines of code uh, actually creates a, a Lambda function and it also creates an API in the API gateway and put that Lambda in the backend for the get method. So if you want to do this in plain cloud formation, it will be much larger. So what else does uh, Sam do? It enables you to do debugging and testing locally. So when I say locally, I mean without deploying the Lambda. So it could be your desktop, it could be your isolated Cloud9 uh, environment, uh, etc. And it has deep integration with DevTools, both AWS and external. You can use AWS SAM with IDEs like uh, PyCharm, uh, IntelliJ, Visual Studio, etc. Uh, it also integrates with uh, Jenkins, Stackery Toolkit, etc. And um, of course, it integrates with uh, AWS native DevOps tools such as Code Build, Code Deploy, and Code Pipeline. Okay, so let's uh, jump into a demo. For this video, we are going to use uh, Cloud9 as an IDE. Uh, and for the subsequent videos, I'm going to show you how you can use uh, Visual Studio Code. Uh, to do some SAM CLI. But for now, let's go to Cloud9. So in Cloud9, SAM CLI is already installed. So if you go to Cloud9 Terminal and type in SAM dash dash version, you will see uh, SAM CLI is already uh, installed. So you don't have to do anything extra. So at this point, let's dive into SAM template concepts. Uh, so using uh, SAM syntaxes, you can create a Lambda function, an API, an application, a layer and a simple table. So I decided instead of just going through theory and slides, I'm just gonna go over uh, using a demo. And trust me, uh, that will make much more sense. Uh, so we're gonna start with actually from the bottom. In this case, we are gonna go with the simple table first, so which is a DynamoDB table, uh, which is like very, very simple. And then uh, we are gonna go over how to create a DynamoDB table using SAM, how to package it, how to deploy it, and then we are gonna go up uh, to function, API, and all that other stuff. All right, so uh, let's, let's do that. Okay, so in Cloud9, I created a folder SAM, and uh, ignore this AWS SAM and Lambda code for now, 
and I created this dynamo-sam.yml. Okay, and this is how the uh, SAM YAML file looks like. Uh, so this AWS template format version, keep it as is, and then you have to include this transform and put this as AWS serverless and this, this particular date. Uh, that's what tells AWS that this is a, a SAM template. Uh, then we give the description. You can give any description as you want. And then this uh, under resources, uh, see this Dynamo Sam, whatever name you give will be the name of the resource. How do I mean by that? So right under this, we have this type and the type is AWS and serverless simple table, right? So this simple table is basically a Dynamo DB table and it is going to create a table with the name Dynamo Sam. So if you want to give it a different name, just change this name. Uh, so then we come to the properties. Uh, so primary key, uh, so this table, we are defining one primary key and the uh, name of the primary key is ID and the type is string. And then we are doing a provision throughput, uh, read capacity units five, write capacity units uh, five. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Uh, but I know what you guys are thinking. Hey, Raj, um, what are some of the other options that I can give for DynamoDB? So AWS has done a great job uh, putting all the parameters in their uh, Git page. So if I go to simple table, uh, so here are all the options. So you can give SSE a specification for server-side encryption. I'll give the link uh, in the description. Okay, so we have our template defined. So now how are we going to deploy it? Okay, so first we have to uh, run SAM package. So SAM package uh, zips your code artifacts and uploads them to S3 and then produces a package AWS SAM template file that's ready to be used. Uh, so this is the syntax, SAM package and then template file, you give the uh, name of the template file and then uh, you have to give the S3 bucket name which is a little bit weird because in this case, we are creating a, a DynamoDB table. So there is no artifact really. So artifacts come into play when you are yeah, creating a layer or a AWS function. Uh, but if you try to run this without this S3 bucket, uh, it's gonna give an error. Uh, even though it's gonna do nothing with this S3 bucket, we have to include this. And then you give a output template file uh, how about we give this package dash dynamo. Uh, okay, so I ran it in the wrong path. So I have to go to this uh, SAM uh, directory. Okay, then let's run this, okay? Okay, so uh, it also helps you a lot. See, it says, hey, you have the package template file, so now just run AWS Cloud Formation and de deploy. Uh, before we do that, let's take a look at this uh, package Dynamo and let's open it side by side. See, this is uh, same uh, because for DynamoDB table, it has nothing to zip or anything. However, for Lambda, you will see uh, it's gonna include a S3 path. Uh, okay, so for now we have we have this packaged uh, Dynamo. So now we have to deploy this. So instead of, you can use AWS CloudFormation deploy, uh, but we are going to be fancy and use uh, SAM deploy. You have to give template-file and then um, you just give the name of the packaged file. So package dash dynamo dot yml and you have to give a stack name. How about dynamo sam create? Okay. Okay, so now let's deploy this. So let's go to CloudFormation in a console and we should see this stack name uh, running. So, I mean, for this Dynamo, you can skip the package step and run deploy directly. However, I always run package and deploy um, because it's like consistent. And if I'm using some commands uh, in my CICD pipeline and down the line, you add a Lambda function to it, then I don't have to go and change uh, the build spec file. 
so yeah, so I always and I recommend you do the same. Uh, else you have to go change the commands uh, later on. Okay, I see Dynamo create stack, create in progress. Uh, so as soon as this is done, we should see uh, the Dynamo getting created. Okay, uh, create complete. So if we go back to Cloud9, uh, see successfully created, uh, but let's check it out. So let's go to uh, Dynamo. So Dynamo create, so it's the name of the stack and then the table name and then some unique ID. Um, okay, so pretty straightforward. Uh, now that we did this, uh, let's do a Lambda uh, without uh, dependencies first. Okay guys, uh, it's kind of more than like 11 minutes and I don't want to make this uh, video like a super long video. So I'm going to put the next part in another video. Uh, if, you, if you're liking this uh, tutorial, uh, please like and subscribe. Alright, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.